evil lurks in the mind of a man. What's up, guys? <laughs> Ladies. And welcome back to another episode of Action Figure Prop Show. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how I make miniature arcade cabinets for my action figures. Okay, so I got all my pieces cut for the arcade cabinet off of my balsa wood. So I got the two sides right here. Same exact measurements and everything. I, cut, I traced out the design with a pencil and I cut it with my box cutter and then I'm just gonna have to sand them one of these is going to be the back the other one is going to be the screen so one of them is going to be like I said the back the other one I'm gonna lay that way so it's a support and it acts as the screen as well well it's gonna probably be more like that then I got the marquee. No, yeah, this is the marquee. If you don't know what a marquee is, it's that. And this is gonna be the tabletop. I still have to shave it down. This is gonna be the top piece. And then this is gonna be the door. So I made this <clears throat> based off of this cabinet design, but I made it a little bit larger because customer wanted it for WWE figures. So as you can see, eh, that's a little too small for him. The tabletop is like at the bottom of his crotch. So in actuality, I mean, he's Erwin Archester's a tall dude, so that's, he'd probably look like the, or he'd actually be a lot bigger with the arcade cabinet, because most arcade cabinets, I think, are like just under six feet. Most of them, yeah, most of them are under six feet. So, yeah, that would be out of scale. But um, you want to make it look best to the action figure. You don't want him towering over it. You want to make it look like it's going to fit him. So I usually, depending on what figures it's going to, I try to match it up as if, you know, you want to make him look good playing it. So now I just got to sand all the rough edges off. And then start gluing them together. Gluing them, painting them, and then add decals and uh, all the little details. All right, so I'm going to start gluing them together. I got tacky glue. I actually prefer turbo tacky glue, but I'm running low, so I got my other tacky glue on deck as well. Got crazy glue. I got my balsa with pieces. So I'm gonna start gluing them together. So I got the back piece right here. I'm gonna glue the two sides together first. So I'm just gonna put Blue strip. Just like that, a little thick, but that's okay. And my super glue. Just put a couple dabs right there. Like, like I said, I like mixing the tacky glue and the super glue. Makes it a little stronger. Makes it dry quicker. Oh shit. What I'll usually do is give it a little rub like that, rub a dub dub. Make sure to line it up at the bottom. Just let it sit there. So it'll already start drying in it pretty quick. Oh, actually, and then just make sure it don't stick to the bottom. See how it's starting to stick right there? And that's okay that I'm going to have excess on the back. You see that? I'm going to sand that shit off. So After it's put together, I'm going to give it a good sand. And then paint it. And then sand it again. And then paint it. Alright. Alright, now this is the front door. And make sure that the pieces you have facing out. Like I checked on the outside that they look good. 
on both sides. So just make sure. I think one side had like a little cut. Yeah, I had a little cut right there. So what I like to do too is just make sure all the pieces are gonna fit. Yep. Yep. Yeah, get it sticky on both sides. Get out of here. Let's see, uh, this piece is going to be tanner top. I have to cut it in a little bit, but yeah, you can see that's going to fit good. You don't want to make them look towering over it. I mean, you can, but I like it better like that. Before I put too many pieces on, I'm going to reinforce the insides. So like the seams right here, I'm going to reinforce some of the seams. Because once you put too many pieces on, you're not going to get, you're not going to get access to the seams. I always keep little scrap pieces around just to help me take glue off, apply glue, all kinds of stuff. So you can see it's a little sloppy, but you're not going to see the inside. And I'd rather have a bunch of glue supporting it than not enough glue on it and it comes apart. So, check out what the screen's going to look like in there. So this piece is the screen slash the support. So I'm going to get the marquee piece on there. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit. And then I got this top piece. I just got to trim a little bit off the back because I mis measured it somehow. Like really bad. Hilarious. So yeah, I just got to trim a little bit off the back. Now that this piece is all glued together, I can um, map out my tabletop because I'm going to have my tabletop slide in just a little bit so that way it's not sticking out all savage like that. You want it to stick out a little bit but not all crazy. So I'm going to cut that in so it slides in and then this is going to be the support and the screen. So I'm going to slide that in there. It's going to act as the screen and also give it a little support so it's not a hollow piece of wood. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit and then uh, as this is drying, I'm going to mess with these thing put together. All right, so I got the last pieces at the top. Cut this piece out. This is the table where the controller and the buttons are going to be. And then just a reminder too, when you're cutting balsa wood, just be careful because where the grain is, it can split really easy, but that's okay because all you got to do is just glue it back together. And then the screen and the support. So glue all that shit together. Then we'll have the shell. And then we'll have to paint it, sand it, paint it. Add all the detail. So I decided to do the little tabletop a little different. Instead of just having the one piece of balsa wood, I actually made like a little box frame for it with the thin piece of balsa wood. So just like the really thin piece like this, made a little frame for it. And then these are the uh, the coin doors. So right there. So you don't want it to stick out too much because this balsa wood is too thick. So the thin piece will work perfect. So it's not sticking out too far. But you still get that three dimensional little coin door. All right, so after the arcade cabinet is fully assembled, I'll sand it before I start painting it. And the kind of sandpaper I use is wet dry P400. It's a really fine grit. So I'll sand it, and then I will paint two coats of just apple barrel cheap acrylic paint. I'll put two layers of that. And once that dries, I will spray paint it black with black spray paint. And then... Um, before I do another coat of black spray paint, I'll sand it, and then I'll do a a bre uh, like a light um, coat.
And the reason I sand it so much is because I want to get rid of some of the wood texture. So, I mean, you can still see the wood grain and everything. But, like, right now, it's, like, really smooth. So, I mean, the more coats and the more sanding you do, you can get it to almost, like, a plastic kind of feel. You can get it, like, completely smooth. I mean, if I keep painting it and I keep sanding it, you can get rid of the wood grains. Um, that's a lot of work. But... Um, the way I do it, I think it works perfect where it's really nice and smooth. So for the decals of the arcade cabinet, I make a PDF in Photoshop. I find images or I make images that I want. Like these images, these are custom made. I don't like any of the way the Street Fighter side art looks, so in Photoshop I made my own. And then I found pictures that worked, like the marquee, coin door, screen, tabletop. Uh, so I found those ones, I was able to find these, manipulate them, resize them, um, and then like I said, I made these custom, so then I'll cut them out, like I did with these ones, like I got a Simpsons one right here, everything's cut out, ready to be glued, I got a Ninja Turtles one, everything's cut out, ready to glue, and that's about it, and then, so this is actually sticker paper, because I like the way sticker paper is, um, the sticker, adhere the yeah, the adhesive on the sticker isn't strong enough to stick, on the side of the arcade cabinet so I usually put a layer of glue on the decal and I put it on there I mean you can use like super glue or tacky glue whatever um, but I found that works the best so here I got an arcade cabinet all finished so I got all the pieces all the decals glued on the side I got the buttons all glued down. I got the joysticks all pinned in. Sprayed a layer of clear coat on there. Help prevent any scratching or rubbing off on the decals. And the paint. So, quick recap balsa wood, paint, black paint, acrylic, and spray paint. Got all the decals printed off sticker paper. And then I glued those on. You can use either tacky glue, super glue, whatever. Um, the adhesive on the sticker paper isn't that good, so I always put an extra adhesive, like tacky glue or super glue. The buttons are made from Milliput. I rolled it into like a snake log, and then when it's almost dry, I cut it with the razor blade, and then I painted them, glued them on there with super glue. The pins, you can just pin in there. Maybe dab a little bit of super glue if they're a little loose. But um, usually you can just pin them in. Um, coin door is a thin piece of balsa wood, you know, the sticker on it. That's about it. Man, RK cabinet is all done. Buttons and joysticks. And so, what's up? I got a magnet inside here. It's like a little sheet. And then I got one of the screens on a magnet. So, gotta line it up. Boom. Uh, I just got to print out the other screen and then put it on a piece of magnet and then I'm all done. And then to get it off, just got to stick your finger in there ever so gently. And peel it off. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Action, Action Figure, Figure Prop, Prop Shop. Shop. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this one's been highly requested. I've had so many people hit me up requesting this video. So I hope you guys enjoy. So if you guys want to see more episodes of Action Figure Prop Shop, make sure to share these videos and go ahead and leave a comment below. Tell me what you want to see on next episode.
If you guys are posting up your pictures on social media, make sure to tag me so I can check it out. It's always great when I can inspire someone to build something. And sorry guys, I'm currently not taking any prop commissions, so please don't hit me up and ask me to make you an arcade cabinet. Um, I do post stuff for sale every once in a while. It'll be in batches. The best way to keep current on that is you can follow me on Instagram. It's punker underscore Mike. And then on Facebook, I have a page that's called Punker Mike's Props and Dials. So I post a lot of my work on there. And when I post stuff for sale, it usually pops up on there. So if you're following me on those two and on the channel, um, you should be able to find something when stuff goes up for sale. And if I am inspiring you guys, you know, make sure to give me a shout out. I see a lot of people, especially on Instagram, using my videos as templates, especially making money off it, and they're not giving your boy a shout out. Come on now. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of my other videos. And other than that, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Next piece. So I always keep my bottles upside down when they're like less than half full. So I don't have to do this, but I always, always forget.